All right. So um, the plan for today is to give you an intro to our waterproof uh, noise monitoring device. Um, and we're going to take you through a few processes, one changing the SD card, uh, changing the SIM and or the modem, uh, and then four is just the process of reassembly and any quality checks associated with having the monitor out in the field for a period of time. Okay, so starting point here is our device. So the exciting pieces are really nothing. There's nothing very exciting about our device. We have a power plug tagged, uh, which connects into a gland, into an innocuous grey box. On the outside of the innocuous grey box, you will see the microphone, which has a small uh, little foam plug. Behind that is a quite sensitive Gore-Tex membrane. So in terms of using the device, try and avoid sticking things into that hole or messing with that hole in any way. Uh, and then finally is a small LED device that actually doesn't do anything at this point, but in the next release of software will tell you some selected pieces of useful information. Uh, in terms of identifying the device, this is a unique code for this specific device. We put all this information on the outside so that we know what is inside, meaning you don't need to open anything up. If you've got a problem with a device, uh, if you take a photo of that or you send us that code, uh, we know everything about it uh, and it makes it a little bit easier so you don't need to start pulling things apart. All right, so having said that we don't really want to be pulling things apart, let's uh, break that straight away by pulling things apart and giving you a look at what's inside. All right, uh, mounting at this point, just simple Phillips head screws. Um, no secrets there. We are looking at some sort of tamper evident connections. Uh, we will see how that evolves. There's a few options uh, under consideration. All right. When opening the device, uh, we've put some marks on this side here to show you this is the hinge side, even though there is no hinge, but that means that the cables that are between the lid and the base are effectively crossing over at that point. So if you're going to open it, open it with that hinge direction and everything will work more easily. Okay, a uh, quick walk through of what we have here. So power comes in through an IECC7 plug into our power transformer, comes out as five volt across into the micro uh, processor, which is a Raspberry Pi 3. Um, in the top of that, we'll look at it a little more in detail, is the SD card. And on the side here, you will see uh, mounted quite close to the device, we have the microphone. So that obviously corresponds with the hole on the opposing side of the device and cables off that ribbon also down to the um, LED, external LED. All right, uh, from there, we have a USB connection across this side to the radio modem that we use for communicating data from the device back to our servers. Okay, so that's a quick overview of all the equipment on the device. What we're going to do now is just run the device through the startup sequence so you can see the way it should operate in normal mode. So that's our device put back together. Now I will quickly power up the device just to show you the sequence that it goes through and just to make that a bit more visible, I'll pull our Telstra modem back out again. So as I power the device up, which is done by plugging it in, we're looking for LED on the Raspberry Pi microcomputer. The red comes on first to say I have power, the green comes on to say I'm starting to think and I'm starting to do things. Um, they will blink on and off and so on. Our next attention then goes to the modem. So we're looking for a red light to tell us there is power, which then starts flashing blue to say I think I found a telephone tower 
and then it goes solid blue to say, I'm connected, I'm talking, everything is good. All right, so effectively now this device is operating. It's recording what I'm doing, logging the data, starting to analyze the sound, looking for whatever noise signal we are interested in, in this case, barking dogs. There is also a green light here, uh, which you may or may not be able to see, given the lighting that I have. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure whether you could see the blue light there. Let me uh, just dim the lighting a bit, and we might just repower that to capture that properly. So depower, simple as that, it depowers, power on, it restarts. So red LED, green LED, to get the Pi started, and then we're looking for red flicker here. Wait for it, wait for it, there we go. Yeah, you can't really see that very well. And then it'll go to a blue flicker, and then a solid blue, and we get a green LED here as well. So those colors are not showing very well on the video at the moment, but you'll just have to trust me, it's blue and it's green. All right, so that's our device running. Um, and I guess the only other piece to look at is the power supply down here also has a little blue LED. So if there's a problem in the power cable before it gets in or the IEC plug, you won't get the blue there. So um, I'll just reassemble all of this back now. Final checks as we close the box up. Uh, probably best to do this with the power off. So we're looking for cables tucked nicely, making sure they're not going to get pinched in the edges of the box. We're looking for the seal around the lid. Okay, checking to see that the devices are seated nicely, the microphone pressed down, the Pi not rattling around, this not rattling around. It's all pretty simple stuff. Uh, and once that's done, we flip the lid over. You can see that cable there is trying to push itself out. So we just want to tuck that down. And the rubber foam is just getting in the way there. Okay, that's all gone together. Screw the baby together. And you have your monitor sealed, waterproof and ready to go into the field. Now, when the monitor goes into the field, as soon as it connects, it talks back to our server. So what we would encourage you to do is when you are doing a deployment out in the field, um, let us know when that is going to happen, just whether it's an email or uh, an SMS or whatever, that's fine. And um, yeah, give us a call or send us a message as soon as you've put a monitor in the field and tell us either with a picture of these numbers or that 2265, the, the first four numbers in the name and tell us or ask us, is this online? We will do a quick check, takes uh, generally a couple of minutes. We can do it just about anywhere and we'll get back to you and say, yep, it's communicating. Now, in some cases, the device will not communicate where we don't have um, we don't have radio communications, and in those circumstances, we're going to start using the LEDs to be able to communicate that to you to say, "I'm happy. I'm monitoring. Everything is okay, but I haven't found a mobile signal." And in that case. You can leave the device, it's still doing its job. It just means A, we're not able to monitor it, and B, we're gonna to have to recover the whole device back into a radio area or the SD card and back to be able to analyze the data. But we'll handle that on a job by job basis, so uh, nothing to sweat about at this point. All right, so that's, um, that's basically it. They're the, uh, the key elements of what we're doing. If you've got any questions, um, by all means, here's the, uh, the contact details. Hit us with an email at info at noisenet.com.au and we would love to talk with you about whatever issues you're having. And if you don't understand any of this, 
but you're really interested in getting the cheapest and most efficient way of resolving noise complaints, um, hit us on that email as well and we'd love to, or come have a look at our website and we'd love to give you a hand. So thanks for your time and hopefully this has been helpful and we will be in touch soon.